lagi Cukulah kau dapatkan diri lagi Burung kaya kapak pundi dulu Eh, hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? Johnny J- Neut- Johnny Johnny Neutron here. Johnny, you sure is that you? Yes, yeah, me. Okay. Johnny D- Neutron here. Hey, what's up? Shabba shabba dooba doo. <laughs> yeah. You hey, what's <laughs> up? Let's turn it on. Hey, what's up? Shabba dabba dooba doo to you, man. Back. <laughs> You're on K Rock 93.9, The Ridge. <laughs> the, the Ridge? The, the, the Ridge. <laughs> Johnny Neutron here. Good morning. Whoa, the traffic out there on the 101 is... <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let's start. Uh, let's just keep that in there. Uh, thank you for well, being, being a, a friend. friend. Travel down the road and, and back, back again. again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Stop. Stop right there. I'm and not done. I'm not done. I'm, no, done, no, I'm, I'm done. done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. My dad died. And if My dad died. Okay. Whoa. My dad died. Whoa. Come in. I can't use it. Invited all the friends. I, I haven't been able to use it. Whoa. Too soon. It happened yesterday. <laughs> too One soon. More line. All right. Go ahead, babe. You would see the biggest gift from me And the card attached would say Thank you for being Yes, friend. sir. Johnny Neutron here on K-Rock 101.1 FM. Listen, um, you guys are confidants. And I didn't even know what that word meant until that song. I never used it, but you're a confidant. Well, everyone in this room is a confidant except for one. I'm going to tell you why. Oh, wow. Because um, some FYI, yesterday... What's today? Is Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Monday. Yesterday, my dad died. I'm so sorry, Bob. Interesting. Hmm, interesting, interesting that you would say something like that because choice. it's interesting that you would say something like that because um, I'm just gonna give you uh, just some facts, okay? My dad passed, and I'm just gonna tell you: Mike Halloran, Natalie, Matt Blake, Gilbert Galone, Stephen Yoon, Stone Street, Giovanna from the th- Gets Kidding. Kids, dad's kidding. Whatever they are dad's, called, dad's kidding. Kids, kid, kid, just kidding. News. I mean, my brother. I don't know my brother. I'm with my brother. Oh yeah, he's spent. Benji, Adam, everyone. Ike Barinholtz, Nick Rutherford, my ex girlfriend Christine, Sarah Tiana, <laughs> everyone. Human. Even the exes. George. Even the exes. And the only one that didn't leave me any kind of comment or message is George. That's. F- I had friends I haven't talked to for thirty years giving me comments. But you haven't done anything. Tell, explain We're yourself. About Instagram, and text us in in every format. You didn't reach out at all. Did my family reach out to you? Yeah, your sister. You're not helping. Your mom. I'm not trying to help. Gil, everyone. <laughs> Why? What, explain yourself. Um, well, I haven't had that much tragedy in my life, so I don't know how to react to these things. So mm-hmm. I try to imagine how I would feel, and I would probably just want to not have to respond to anybody. Uh, and given our relationship and how much you don't like talking to me in general, <laughs> oh, I was thinking oh, shit, at there this it is. time in There's life, the hammer. you would I, probably extra not want to hear from me. Whoa. No, that's so not, I wanted that's, to give you your no, space. No, that's not what it is. That's and not then, what it is. That's not what it is. Okay. I just want. What does that sound? <laughs> Wait, whose phone is that? What sound is that? Um, queek, queek, queek. I left my phone on. So yeah, but what noise is that? Queek, it was queek, queek. Two queefs. It's it's the minions. Beep beep beep. Oh beep beep beep. Oh, oh that's oh, cute like and very it. relevant. Thank you. Anyway, so you did it. That's fine. I get what you're saying. But uh, let's just start from the beginning. We well, already no. We already did that. We already did that. Mm-hmm. So um, I haven't done this podcast in a while. A month. A month and a half because yeah. I've been out. So I've been. I've had a crazy. Um, I went to Montreal for two weeks. Mm-hmm. I went to Hawaii for about a week and a half. And then I got came back for a couple of days. And then my mom called Monday, last Monday, to say, you got to come now. And um, I know if you don't want to hear this, turn it off. But I want you to keep it on so we can get the numbers. So stay on. But listen, okay. This is not going to be a funny episode. This is going to be trying. We're going to try to be more real about it, Okay. And I'm wearing my sunglasses because my brother bought me these and they were over $50 and he's never bought me anything. That's amazing. Are I'm wearing they the, women's sunglasses? I don't know, but he went to Costco to get it. Oh. And I don't I think, think they there are any $50 sunglasses in Costco, babe. He's a liar. We know that too. So we can do some research on that. <laughs> after. After that, but I don't want to do that now. Okay. So, um, so Monday, my mom called. I was at, here's what happened Monday. I wake up and I had to go to All Things Comedy. So I went to All Things Comedy to meet with Mike Bertolini. What's his name? Bertolina. Whatever. 
and we had a little meeting and then I go, you know what? I'm hungo. I'm going to go to a dog house mm. for chili dogs. Delicious. Because my body craves it sometimes. Mm. I order it, get some tater tots. As soon as the meal hits my, get it from the thing, my mom called saying, you got to come now. So I called Kalila. She got me a plane ticket and my brother. We flew over there and we thought that he was going to die right then and there. But when we walked into the hospice, he was very cognitive alert. And, and alert and there. He smiled when we walked in. He said our names when we walked in. Mm. We kissed him. We started crying. It was crazy. And um, so then in my head, I'm like, he didn't look as sick as my mom made it out to be. She was just freaking the fuck out on the phone. So when I saw him, I'm like, oh, he looks like he always does. Like he's there. He's ta- talking. But then the lady came in. She said, yes, yeah, so we just put him off. We're not feeding him anymore. And um, no more water. Well, that's you have to explain why that sounds cruel when you don't explain, babe. No, let's just throw out that. No context. Hey. There's a, there, I mean, yeah, the people can fill in the blanks, right? It's like he has infections, a lung infection. Anything that comes into his body that's solid, right, is going to turn into, that's going to feed into the infection and... He's not going to be able to digest the food and it's going to come through. He's going to vomit it all out and he's going to die that way because he has infections on his stomach because you've been feeding him through his stomach. It, right? just, it would just add a lot more distress. Yeah. Mm. But when he said that, my brother goes, I have a question. What do you mean you fucking can't feed him? Oh, like he said fucking? Like, no, you're not fucking, but he was like kind of like shocked by it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's just, and I kind of pull my brother back and go, dude, just. It's just, he'll have an infection. And then he's like, there's nothing you can do. I go, and she said, you can bring him to the hospital and get him antibiotics and try to do it that way. But you're only going to prolong his life for another seven days. Mm-hmm. Right? So I go, all right. And then that's when it hit us. And then by Wednesday, when, you know, he just, we just start, started losing him. Like, he there was nothing behind the eyes. And my brother Steve spent just days at nights till three, four, five in the morning there just sitting next to him because he didn't want my dad to pass and no one be in the room, which is like a credit to my brother. Um, and, and if you're listening to this, I'm sorry, it's depressing, but this is, it literally just happened. So you had, you had a weird couple of days there. The, the conversations you were, we were having were really weird between Monday and Wednesday. Why? Why? He would go back and forth between calling me and be like, Babe, this is the most depressing shit ever. You would love the new athletic wear I just bought. And then you would go into like kind of to a half cry and then like be like like excited about the new leggings because you just Because a year bought. Le- a year ago I saw Joe Coy with his family wearing yeah. these like Nike leggings. Leggings, the tight kind, but mm-hmm. what he does what they do now the kids is they put shorts over it. So, the, it so the leggings are exposed. Babe, so you get no, just listen they've to been me. doing that I, for like I, I 10 know, but years. I, I, I never we're noticed learning. it before. We're, I'm learning. I never noticed it before, learning. Joe Coy. We're okay? learning. I, we're learning. Thank you, Gilbert. We're learning, okay? So I had bought this combination, this camo pants, shorts, tight leggings. And when I was talking to you, I was in remor- remorse and I was feeling sad. Mm. But then I would pop my eyes onto my new fucking vibe from my waist down. And I was excited about it. So I just expressed to you that I love this new leggings. I know it sounded senile because I was like in and out of crying and freaking out, but that's the truth, baby. And that's life. Mm. That's what happens when you're um, in that situation, you know? So the week, I'm just going to finish it. So the week went on and then by, I mean, I imagine they didn't feed him since Monday. So now come to Friday and he, there's just no moisture in his mouth. He's staring at the ceiling at times and then closing his eyes and sleeping for 20 hours. And then Sunday, um, it was like seven, eight in the morning and I was sleeping and I heard my mom downstairs and it was, um, a sound that I don't ever want to hear again. It was, I don't know, it was just, I, I just couldn't, my brother and I were in shock. My mom was crying, screaming, mm. get up, he's, he's dead or whatever. We get in the car, we race there, 
And I don't know. Listen, I want to say this too. The hospice that my dad was in, everybody in that hospice deserves a medal. And if they had penises, that suck them. But they're women. And that's that's sexist. And that's being aggressive. Yeah. So I can't say the vagina thing, right? So mm-hmm. you get what no, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But my point is, is that they were so good. We It's 24 hours. You can go slip in and out. There's a little vending machine. It's really nice. Very nice airy place. And um, we walk in and the lady said he just took his last breath. And my brother and my mom collapsed in sheer devastation. I've never seen anything. I mean, it, and I did not cry. I what? cried Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but yeah. then when it actually happened, you know, I had these fancy sunglasses on that my brother got me at Costco. And um, I just stood there absorbing what was going on. It was like almost like sh- I was in shock. Mm. And then my uncles and aunts all drove from San Diego, so they came in. And this uncle, chung his dad, my mom's, older sister's husband who I just did the movie with Eric Griffin Chung is husband EJ me and Eric Griffin and Sean Austin and Al Majgur on this new movie so there so my uncle who I don't I've never talked to in my life growing up he was the doctor Mm. and he comes in the room and he full blown goes hold it I wrote something he pulls out a two page poem or something. Yeah. Wow. And he destro- he rocked the room out. Really? Yeah. So from as soon as he opened his mouth, it was just tears galore. I mean, and I didn't understand a word he was saying, but he was going, you know, saying in Korean, you taught me to golf that one time, you know, where, where we could, didn't know where to go. So you let us stay at your house for three months. Mm-hmm. Just all these things. And my brother, that's when I did weep because mm. it was a powerful poem. Then I go, let's go have lunch. And they go, we want to go back. They drove, stayed for an hour. We went to In and Out. That's where they wanted to eat. I go, there's a fancy place called fucking, what's that place? Mastro's. That, Mastro's. Right there. <laughs> five star hotel, a five star restaurant. No, In and Out. So I went and bought everyone In and Out. They drove away. It's been a blur since then. Huh. Until you guys came up here. It's been an absolute blur. I don't know what's going on. It's just because there's still a lot of crying in the house. Mm-hmm. And just sporadic. Yeah, your brother just texted me say, saying your mom's in shambles. Oh, fuck, man. Oh, I gotta go. <sighs> you can handle it. You should told me that afterwards. Yeah, that was tough. I think that maybe he's just talking about not currently, but just generally she's in shambles. I think she's in shambles because she is going in and out of tears. I, I just. Imagine- how do you. How do you. How do you live with somebody for 50 years, which is what she did? And and she said he's the only man she's ever been with. She only fucked wow. one guy, that guy. And I kept telling her, there's bigger dicks out there. <laughs> and she's like, I don't care. And I'm like, there are thicker, bigger, juicier ones. <laughs> and she's like, I don't, that's the only one I know. So that's the third vibe. You really sold it on her too. Yeah, I did. I, I said, there are black dicks out there that are juicy and, you know what I mean, relevant. <laughs> Relevant, yeah, and she's like, I don't care. <laughs> Relevant, it's dicks. in now, it's in now, all right. But anyway, um, she's only fucked him, and um, also you have to understand that she doesn't really have a lot of friends. My parents, my parents are like me, mm. where you have two or three people that you talk to. My best friend is Kalila. My lover is Kalila. My my everything is her. She does everything. She's also my assistant. She gets me plane tickets. She organizes. <laughs> And that's that's all I, that you know she's everything. So my mom's that same way. So my dad and mom, for fifty years, that's all they do is see, just hang out for fifty years. And imagine, imagine that now. Mm. How did they meet again? She met through um, my cousin, my uncle's uncle. Goes, I know this little guy to my mom, which is not a. And my mom's probably like, does he have a big black juicy? Is it relevant? Yeah, it's not. Re- it's not relevant. Not relevant? No. Didn't he like leave a steak at her doorstep? See, that's what happened. She Wait. So my dad, my mom and dad met. Big juicy oh. steak. Yeah. They went on a couple dates. My mom, my dad fell in love. My mom didn't want anything. He has a flat face. Yeah. It's a flat, fucked up face that he has. Like mm-hmm. mine? No. Because you still have um, Peaks. qualities. You have film qualities in your face. 
And you're going to be a very big star one. Thank you. Okay, so I know that's what you wanted to hear. Oh. And now my eyeglasses are off. I'm looking right at you. Yeah. You're going to be a very big star one day. I can't. Yeah, I know. And your flat face is going to be an asset. I imagine the kind of movies you can do. What are, what are they, Bobby? Or like Guardians of the Galaxy 3, flat face. It's some sort of wall creature. Okay. <laughs> we'll write it. I'd be, how, great would, how funny would that be with that other big blue guy? Yeah. Right? You're like, they're like walking by a, a wall. And they, you didn't say hi to Jimmy. I am yeah, flat. That, there, there we go. So that's what I'm that's saying. What it is, yeah. Yeah. So it's a big future for you. Thank you. But my parents, um, that's all. They, so what happened was my mom didn't want anything to do with them. And so she moved to Wisconsin with that uncle that did the speech. Mm. Oh, yeah. And her older sister, they lived in Wisconsin. My dad flew to Wisconsin and then he bought the most expensive steak. Now, I know Americans, women love diamonds. Yeah. And they like flowers and shit. Yeah. Koreans want food and steak, a good piece of meat to do barbecue. Yep. <laughs> right? I, you That's know like, what? It's true. <laughs> legit. <laughs> right? In fact, if you pull out a steak out of your pocket, I'm okay. Not gonna pull out a steak. But here's this. You fucking asshole. Why does this make me an asshole? Because I bought you that ring and then you let, I found it on the ground on the rental car. Look, he, oh. so he, no, 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 no. You are, you see, that's a lie. It's not a lie. It's I a lie. I found it on the ground why? of the rental car. Why? I don't know why. Because when because I was. you don't give a fuck. No, because when I was on Hawaii in the plane, I, I wanted to sleep and I didn't want to lose it. Yeah. And I sleep like this with my hands on my face, like I do this. Mm -hmm. And it was piercing my face. So I said, can you put it in your bag and hold it until we get to LA. That's like saying, can you throw it in the trash? <laughs> if you want to give it to me, you, that means you may never see it again. I love this ring. I've been wearing right, it every well, day. Anyway, well, yeah, for the week it's been here in Arizona. It's fine. It's to you. You know what's so you weird? Have, what? He's been really sensitive about this ring. I'm uh, very sensitive about because it. Because it came in a very special, like a uh, like a box, right? He got it in Hawaii. If I was a guy, I would feel a certain way too if I did a test ring and you reacted that way. Oh, this is a test ring? Yeah. And look where it was. I didn't a know. rental car I ended up in the in bottom a, in the of a rental, rental car. car. A Hertz you rental car. You know why? Car. Yeah. Because I prefer steak. And that's what I'm going to mm. propose with her. Actually, please don't kill a cow. <laughs> I'm go to Ralph's. No, and no, get no. no. Raw, <laughs> raw steak. A shit steak. No, no, no. Not steak, babe. All right. Anyway. Portobello that, mushroom. Don't, don't lose it again or we're going to have a very big problem. <laughs> and let's just not talk about it again, okay? But that was rude. And admit it. Anyway, um... So what was I saying? Oh, that's how they met. So then my dad, my mom, my dad got a steak, ring the doorbell of this like apartment complex in Wisconsin somewhere. And she took him back. And they've been with each other ever since. And um, my dad was um, a violent, rageaholic, alcoholic. And so growing up was very difficult, I think. I don't know what other people's lives were like, but I read storybooks and I've mm -hmm. seen like movies mm -hmm. it's nothing like those movies you know we were at times running for our lives so growing up i didn't really i don't I technically loved him if he had died then i don't think i would have it would have been a bummer but but what was his life like before like did he go through a lot of hardships before he came to america like he must have had his own fair share of of a tough upbringing because I think maybe that's what carried over into his adult life. Well, he didn't have an education. So what happened was when he was a young man, the Korean War happened and he didn't get good grades. He's not, mm. he's not, I think I take after him. He doesn't have a lot of facts. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by no facts? He doesn't know really information. Like if mm. you say, where's Mount Fuji? I don't know. Mm. You know who's, to share a Mufun. I don't know. He doesn't know anything. If you played him a Beatles song, like anything, like Let It Be, this is the first time he's ever heard it. Mm. He's like one of those kind of immigrants. He's he so, your mom is so the opposite. My she mom knows loves music. Her, well, not beyond that, her, his mom loves history. Mm -hmm. And she loves like learning all these tidbits and new languages. And yeah. Like she's such a, she's a very like eccentric and very colorful woman. And she's We also had albums around the house like, all the Beatles albums, Simon Garfunkel, things like that, where even as a young guy, you would go to the record player and play it because you don't know, you know. And so my love for Elton John or any of these kind of like the Everly Brothers mm -hmm. or whatever, she would have it. She liked music. 
And um, she even likes new stuff. If I set like rye, like I'll play her a rye. She's like, oh, I like that, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. But, but my dad, in fact, when he had his first stroke, we put in his earphones, um, Eric Clapton, Tears from Heaven. Ooh. And he, I imagine he had a stroke. So we have headphones and we push play and he literally started crying. And he said for the first time, I like music. For the first time, he got it. Whoa. You know, so he's just one of those kind of guys. So growing up, he went, you know, he grew up in the Korean War. Mm-hmm. He was, it became a street. Um, he used to pit poc- pickpocket. Mm-hmm. He was an actual pickpocket? Yeah, he was a pickpocket. He was also sell gum to the American soldiers. But he was also a hood, like he had like a little street gang and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh. But then he, as he got older, he didn't do good in school. So he went and joined the military. So he was in the Korean army. And I, I don't really know how he got to America. I just you know, never really... I didn't know who got him the ticket. I don't know how he got a visa. I don't know any of that. So anyway, um, so Sunday happened. And um, now um, I canceled a bunch of road dates. I'm so sorry. Um, I have to go back to Hawaii. Let's go back to... Because I haven't talked about Montreal. Oh, yeah. I haven't talked about Hawaii Five-0. Mm-hmm. Not Hawaii, what's the show I did? Magnum, Magnum P.I. P.I. <laughs> and I didn't talk about any of those things. So Sorry to interrupt, guys, but we have we an love amazing to. sponsor. We would love to interrupt it. Let's interrupt. Rich Wallet. We love it so good. Um... You know, let me just sell that again. You know what? No, I'm not going to because no. my dad died. It's real. Yeah, it's real. The Ridge Wallet. <laughs> All right. So, hey, guys, honestly, listen, I have in my, oh, I don't want to, you know, you get it. I have, I, that's all we use is the Ridge Wallet. Mm-hmm. We all do. Even we, me. even Kalakal, Licks. Kalakal's Licks. Kalakal Licks. Kalakal. Even she likes it. But I want to say that um, my family uses it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, all my friends use it. It's a high quality piece of hardware in your pocket. You can't RFID protection. The, the elements that are in it yeah. are very groovy, future Titanium, elements. Yeah. And um, it's my favorite thing. And all the time, tell them about it. Guys, get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping by going to ridge.com slash slept. That's ridge.com slash slept. And use the code slept, S L E P T, link in description. Okay. Postmates, guys. Postmates. Mm. You guys, Postmates is one of those um, apps that I use on a daily basis, maybe two or three times a week, day, oh, wow. a day. Um, I get food from them. I get light lamp fixtures. I mm. get um, everything that I ever wanted, and they deliver to your house. Um, it's just the most convenient thing, and um, we really endorse this product here mm. on Tiger Belly. Yeah. Postmates, tell them about it. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app and use the code BELLY. That's the code BELLY for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. Like what else can you get on uh, on Postmates? Gosh, so we live on um, what we, we live close to this area called Sushi Row. And every day, Bobby Postmates from a different Fuck sushi yeah, spot. Man. Every day. Every day. And you can get that. You can also get... Um, Pet food. A Jersey yeah. Mike's. Groceries. New Jersey food. All that stuff. And you guys, you can actually do what they do with 100 free dollars Just and do free it. delivery credit These for guys, seven days. guys, my dad days. died. Get most Postmates on your app. <laughs> Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it. Download Postmates and say with the code BELLY. Enjoy the rest Thank of the show. You. As you guys know, it was the first time I was invited to Montreal. Now, get this, Okay. What I've been doing for the last month and a half is I spent two weeks in Montreal, yeah, almost two weeks in Hawaii to do Magnum PI. I got home for two, three days, and, and my dad was sick. So I've only been, I've only slept one night in the new house for the last month and a half. So I'm dirty and I'm lost and I'm confused. Mm. I don't know what the fuck is going on, mm-hmm. and so um, so I went to Montreal and I want to say to people at Montreal. And Howie Mandel and all these fucking people. It was one of the greatest comedy experiences of my life. It's something that I have always dreamt that it was going to be like that. And it was more than that. That's awesome. And I was so angry that they, it took me 20 fucking years to get there. In fact, every comic that found out that was my first time in Montreal, it blew their minds. That this is, you've never, I go, no. Yeah. I don't know what anything is. Yeah. 
But as soon as I went, and you know, my I, I hosted the nasty show, so Andrew Schultz. I didn't really know him, but he was the one that blew my mind. Yeah, I was so jealous you got to hang out with him and meet him. Yeah, blew my fucking mind. And him and I became lovers almost. Oh, That's wow. awesome. Like cheek to cheek hugs. I mean, the whole thing. I love that dude. Andrew, when you're in LA, you're doing gonna do this podcast, Tiger Belly. Yeah, what's up? And then I I hung out with Jimmy Carr for a, two weeks. I hung out with Jim Jeffries for like three days. Talked to him a lot. Everyone. That's not everyone, but a lot. Yeah. Okay. But what I loved about it is, you know, you go to an elevator at the hotel or whatever, and then you see Craig Robinson, you see Jim oh Jim Norton came in town. He's like, let's get dessert. So the first night I was there, I was at a coffee shop with him and his girlfriend and Bonnie McFarland. What a great experience. And the whole thing was great. And every show was a thousand seats. I wow. hosted every show. It was always sold out. And I did four, 13 shows. I did a TV show. I did stand up on a TV show. Oh. Crushed it, right? I did Jim Norton's late night show with, not Jim Norton's, it was Bonnie and um, Rich Voss's show. And then, um, I came, then I came straight from there to Hawaii. The first three days of Hawaii was the worst acting experience I've ever had because I flew from Montreal, which is 12 hours difference. Yeah. I couldn't sleep on the plane. Once I landed, I had to go right to set and shoot every scene, 30, 40 fucking chunks of lines. They wanted fast. A lot of it's like dialogue that I'm not used to saying. Yeah. And it was really hard. And I, the first night I was there, I was like, I, I don't want to do this. I want out. But then as days went on, and who I love, all my scenes were with that Mexican fool. Jay Hernandez. Jay Hernandez. Hernandez. That Mexican fool dude right there. Oh, yo, Jay, you listening right now, man? I'm telling you something right now, bro. <laughs> you, you're a special one, man. Handsome, right? Hispanica. Yeah. Which I love. The best. Great actor. And he's playful. And when I see a fool, right? Now you, you're playful, I guess. You're very you're whimsical, I like you. Thank you. You live in the fucking. What about her? Oh, she's the, the thing. <laughs> she's she's the Narnia. Thing. She's Narnia. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, she's the playful, most playful. She has cherub. Oh. Ah, I don't even know what one is. But anyway, you're great, babe. You're mythological. Thank you. But um, and then so, and then this other girl that's on the show, Purdy, fucking great actress. Mm. And we hung out. Last two or three days were fun. And I'm going back in three weeks to do another episode. And um, and Gene. Gene. Gene is the head, one of the writers. And he's the one that wrote me into the show. And he's Korean. And he... Let me say something to you, for our friend. You took me to the best acai places on earth. Remember that place? What's it the, called? The Cove. The, the, the Cove. If you're ever in Honolulu and you want acai, please go to The Cove and get... Whatever. It's the best. <laughs> get whatever. So then I did. Get so I, so, so Kalila went out there for the last couple of days and then I came back and then my dad died. So that's oh, pretty God. much the Man. whole month. the whole month of, of my life. And um, I just want to tell people, you know, all the people that left messages and comments, I really appreciate it. I haven't really fully grieved. I, I'm afraid it's going to come out in a way that that I'm not intending it to come out because I don't think Sunday, I think I was being strong for my mom and my mm. brother, but I don't think I fully grieved. What does it feel like right now? I feel my eyes are, has pressure. But that there's no exit? There's no exit. I feel oh, pressure gosh. in my eyes and I want to cry now, but I can't. And it's going to come out in a weird way. I'm going to play tennis or something. You know hey, I mean? that's not a bad well, thing. Yeah, but I'm going to just burst into tears or something. Because my dad and I used to play tennis together. Something yeah. like that's going to happen. Yeah. Where, mm -hmm. but, um, but I think that you should allow it to come out any which way it wants. You know, it's something I don't I think that it's it's a process you have to go through no matter what. And you have to expect that it will come out in one way or another. So just will it is it a chance where it won't come out? Mm, unlikely. It'll probably come out. At it some always point. comes out. Like I think that um um when I heard the news about your dad, I was you know, sad for you. Mm -hmm. 
but I didn't have a good cry until you posted that picture on Instagram. And then I called you sobbing because yeah, I think yeah. that's just that, that, I don't know, that encompasses all like, I, I know you told stories about how your dad was, you know, violent and all of that. But in that picture, you could see just so much tenderness and love that's, with this little baby that was you. That's what it is. And here, that's the point. I thank you for saying that because don't get me wrong. With my parents and I, and I wasn't the best kid at all. I was a fucking crazy kid, you know, but I knew I've always known that there was love. No matter what they did, that's I've always, my brother and I have always known that that we've been loved, mm. and um, and also I understood at an early age that he's just doing the best he can. Yeah. With with the circumstances mm. that he has, you know. So, um, yeah, I understand, and also I don't know if without that kind of childhood and that love that I would have been able to do this business really even. Yeah. I think. They gave me enough foundation where I wasn't like a crazy person, you know, and I did know what love and all that stuff was. And um, also my dad is very just when he finds that thing that he needs to do, he just does it constantly. And that's what I do with comedy. It, it, you know, I don't I go up a lot, you know, and um, that's because I think my dad or something, you know, he's just laser focus on one thing. And he did that with his business, you know. But I don't know how it's going to come out, and um, and it's it's my brother and I keep saying it's surreal. We don't know. This is it's a nightmare. I also don't think that you've had a lot of sleep in the past couple of weeks. I haven't no. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that you're able to to. I, I don't think you're living in a in a in a reality right now. Yeah, I'm not. I'm in a, it's a blur. I've been eating terribly too. Yeah. Because, um, just, we don't have time going to the hospital. It's like right by the other house. They live in an area where it's more farmy. And so there's only like canes or like, you know, at late at night, our only option is Alberto's. What's that? It's like a, they have them in California. They're like late night, 24 hour Mexican restaurants with really weird meat. You know the mystery meat. Or mystery, mm-hmm. but I like it because it gives me nostalgia from when I grew up in Poway. We had one, mm-hmm. but yeah, I've been eating terribly. I haven't been sleeping, and um, I just gotta get my mom to. What's the What's the plan? I know you guys didn't want to do a service, and is that it was it today. Like, so your dad just didn't want um, a service, or he was just um, no. I my brother and I walked into the place. The lady was like. Nice, but very Adams family like. What does that mean? She's just dark hair, pale skin, mm. real round eyes, and just you know, with the same clothes. Cl- you know, it was just a little much. Yeah. And then um, she was explaining. I know that because I watched Six Feet Under. That's like one of the shows I saw. Yeah. So I know I know the game a little bit. You know, upselling and stuff. You know what I mean? And it's a business, a big business. What did you try? But when I just basically said, put them in a brown box, put some engravings on it. She goes, it's going to be this much. I go, do it. And then there's no service. Mm. We're having no... My my Koreans do it that way. Really? Yeah. My Korean, the Koreans that I know yeah. are just like... very, my, Especially my mom and my uncles and stuff. It's just like, who would... Who's going to go? I He called me last week. Yeah. And he was like, we're just going to cremate, cremate my dad. No service. But that's not what the phone call was for. He called me to basically give me a an entire spiel about how he wants his funeral to be, how it's going to be a large procession of thousands of people. Thousands? Yeah, he wants thousands of people. No. He wants like performers and singers. Yes. And he's like, yes and you know that. what he said? No, yes and you know what no. he said? He's like, the slideshow, babe, the slideshow, it better be good. IMAX, Dolby. Yeah. <laughs> the slideshow is the most important one. And then one. What, I, what did I really say? Is. And I'm like, you got it. I'm Scorsese. Okay, what's, what, what song am I going to, what do I want? Um, God, it's a Velvet Red House Painter no, song. No, it's not a Red House Painter song. Velvet Underground? It? No. Um, hold on. Just, if you don't know, then we have a problem. No, you didn't tell me last you week. You know already. No, I don't. Look at his eye. Look no, at his eye. I don't. Look Look at his... I give me a it's clue. It's classical. classical. Oh, I know. It's Eric Satie piano. There we go. There yeah. we go. There we of go. course I know. There we go. That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> What's mine? 
Golden Girls soundtrack. No. <laughs> 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 you guys go away and play. I'm gonna play. You don't know it. You don't know it. <laughs> you never told me. There's two songs. We never told me. There's two songs. Right, what is it? You memorize Wait, this. Memorize so it. People are crying and then <laughs> thank you for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's two songs. Go ahead. Okay, it's Beatles. Which one? My Blackbird. Life. Yes, my he life. got it. No, he, oh, my, life. my Life. I love that yeah, song. Yeah. And then Roy Orbison's Blue by You. I'll you do know my life. this. I'm going to do My Life. But it, well, you, cut, I'm going to cut the, the Roy Orbison. Why? <laughs> it means a lot to me. All right, we'll put it in. At the end. When people are leaving. Okay, what's your second song? Because Eric Satie ends. Put on a loop. <laughs> <laughs> I want that song put on a loop. The infinite loop. Because I really like that movie Being There. It's one of my favorite movies. I've talked about it before. And I, I, I Chauncey want Gardner. Yeah. We, we, if, we, if we have a kid, the kid's name is going to be Chauncey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, it will be. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's so not a very good name, babe. <laughs> was a good basketball player. Chauncey, Chauncey Lee. Chauncey, Chauncey Billups. Billups. <laughs> <laughs> it really is a guy. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Um, I had a basketball player do a little comment. Oh. Was it Danny Green? Yeah. I love that guy. Oh, uh, yeah? yeah. Championship nice. Danny Green. He's champion. You guys from friends the Toronto, now? Toronto? Yeah, he's yeah. friends. Because they did that show in Montreal together. Oh. No, we had a lunch thing. Me um, and... Um, don't tell me the name. Me, Chauncey... Not Chauncey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, <laughs> me, what's his name? Chauncey what the fuck Phillips. is that? I love him. He's... Uh, Donnell Rawlings. Oh. So me, Donnell Rawlings, and Danny Green <laughs> had Phillips. lunch. Had lunch. And, um, and then I said something... And then she got mad. What is it? Can you say it? Nope. Okay. I, I took it. We t- they took it out. Well, here's the thing. He knows that when he does things on camera, he can say anything about me. Anything at all about ah. my vagina, but my... Delicious, a- by the way. <laughs> anything at all. <laughs> what? Yeah, delicious but, and fresh. <laughs> but when he was in Montreal and he did the show with Danny Green and Donnell Rawlings and Chauncey Billups, he, <laughs> so they, they he threw this, my mom no, under the bus. It was one of those. It was They brought a pig's head out. <laughs> all right, right Gil. With, with a little... Right? And I go, you Meritus? Oh... <laughs> No, no, no. That's not what you said. That's what I said. You no. said, oh, that looks delicious. It looks like she's like my girlfriend's mom. No, I go, Meritus? And they go, who's Meritus? I go, my girlfriend's mom. I said like that. It got a big it laugh. Crush. It crushed. It got a really big laugh. But, you know, I called them to take the laugh out. And it wasn't a personal thing. It was just a funny moment. And when you're improvising, baby, you throw it out. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And That's you know that. Mama. You know the rules. I know. You know I love your mom more than anybody. I love your mom like she's my mom. I really do. When I see your mom, I feel safe. And I have a good relationship with her. I love her so much. And so, and you know that. But you called her a pig's head. It doesn't matter. It's just for the joke. I know it's my mom. I know, it's a joke. Or I should have said, oh, Kalila's vagina. Is that that would have been like, yeah, all right, all right cool. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, next. I'll do that joke next time. No yeah, taken. No, yeah, no, none taken. But you know what's great about Montreal is, is that, and here's, here's the deal, is um, I did Andrew Santino's podcast in oh, Montreal. Yeah. It was packed. How many and people were in that one? I don't know, maybe a hundred, but in oh, that wow. little room, yeah. it, it, it was pretty good. And um, it was um, free flowing and fun. And um, and I said to the people in Montreal, I go, you know, we'd love to have Tiger Belly here. And they said, yeah, for sure. So we're going to work on that. It might not be this because I just went. Maybe the next year. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to keep going. This podcast, we're going to keep going. And I'm going to say something exciting to everyone listening, okay? I know I've been out, and I know I've been doing other things, but, you know, this podcast is very important to me. And um, we also have great guests coming up when we moved into the new studio. A lot. And that's going to be soon. But we have great people coming on, like big names. It's going to be great. And um, How do you feel about Eric sitting in for you last week? Oh, yeah. You know... I want to be honest with you. I make fun of that guy so fucking much. So much. I say so many bad things. I'll show you a text that we had just recently. Oh God. And I just felt real bad about it. But okay. might as well just get into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where is it? Where is it? Eric. He was telling us that Andrew Santino called him to ask permission. Oh, yeah. If he could do a podcast. And Eric was like, mm, fuck no, I would be salty. Yeah, yeah. Eric. Yeah. So Eric. Okay. So Santino and I want to do. A podcast together. Red and yeah. yellow. Something like that, right? And um, and I told Andrew, I said, I can, I, I can only do it if Eric gives his, you know, blessing. 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 So Andrew did his best. <laughs> nope. 
<laughs> no, I mean, for real, though, he would, he was being serious. He would be devastated. I know. That's why we're not doing it. That's why we're not doing it. Or you all three could just do one. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, why don't you just yeah. all three do it one together? Where Bobby's the mainstay host and they just alternate with Bobby. <laughs> And then I'll steal him back after the third episode. I think it's hard with. I think it's hard with three. You know, three is hard. I don't know where this. Oh, I don't know where this went. But it was basically. It was basically. He goes, "How are you? You know, I'm thinking about you." And I go, "I'm in Phoenix. What's the best place to get donuts?" God. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. And he goes, "I hate you." But it's just that's how I treat him. And but like so. But let me say something. You know, I make fun of his weight. I I make fun of everything. He looks like digital underground. Mm-hmm. If he was a balloon, you know, a floating <laughs> balloon. And um, he, if you've seen Eric Griffin's body up close, and let's say, let's be honest, it's not the best. You know what I mean? I mean, if you have the Rock, that's type of body. Yeah. It, the polar opposite is Eric Griffin's, mm. and one being better than the other. <laughs> Okay. Jesus. But now that's not me attacking him. He's a good guy inside. Yeah. But here's what here's what he proved to me though. Inside. What proved to me is is that Eric Griffin is a true friend. Mm-hmm. Sorry to interrupt, guys, but we have an amazing sponsor. Quip, 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 quip. quip. Quip guide is Quip guys is the only toothbrush that I use. Oh wow. The reason why it's cute, it's small, it vibrates in a way that it doesn't hurt my gums mm. or my teeth. You can tell it's getting spots within the crevices. Oh, don't look at my teeth oh, right sorry. now. They yeah. look so white though. Thank you. Because of it's because of quip, right? Oh, okay. And um it really is it, the vibrations don't irritate my gums and I feel like I'm getting a really good clean. And it's cute, and it's it's just a great little product that we really love here. It it makes you excited to brush your teeth because he normally doesn't brush. I don't brush it ever. And now he brushes three times a day. Three days because I like to use the Quip, right? And if you don't buy Quip right now, my dad's not going to get into heaven. Oh, my God. And that's why Bobby <laughs> and we love Quip here at Tiger Belly. And why it's perfect so, for getting back get into now. the routine. <laughs> Quip starts at $25, and if you go to getquip.com slash belly right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash belly. My dad's in the netherworld right now trying to get through the gateway to get to heaven, guys. Once again, that's getquip.com slash belly. Push him through, guys. Push him through. Get Quip. Hymns, hymns, hymns for hymns. You guys, I'm telling you right now, because my father passed. I'm not, I'm not making a joke, okay? But I'm saying that my dad's dick was broken and, and he has Jean-Luc Picard, Picard hair, mm. right? And in his day and age, he didn't have the fucking... Because, you know, growing up, he didn't have the money and, what, and the resources sure. to get those two things you know, taken care of for him, you know? Difficult. And what I'm saying to you right now is, is that we now have... We're here technologically, okay. right? At a point in your life where you're a man and you have problems... Whether it be sexual or the hair, hair loss, loss, right? Yeah. And you can get professional help for cheap. Oh my gosh. And you go to the forhims.com, right? And maybe if my dad took this, he maybe he'd be alive. Or have a full set of hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or have a full set of yeah. hair. Guys, order now. Tiger Belly listeners get that a trial month of work. hymns start off right. for just $5. <laughs> it's okay. Wait, it's, good. it's still good. Hold on. It's still good. That Tiger was a Belly too far, but. Tiger Belly listeners get a trial month of hymns for just $5 today right now while supplies last. See website for full details and safety information. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash belly. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash belly. Forhims.com slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. What he's done for my brother, what he's done for me, the, his attentiveness to especially this time of our lives He's the only one that's been constantly, aside from obviously you, you, not him, but you, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> fuck you and fuck you, okay? And fuck your, well, how about this fucker? <laughs> how about this? Why don't you comment on people's things when the guy dies? <laughs> Let's start Why are you saying comment, a, babe? Text. Why doesn't he text you? I just wanted anything. Because I didn't want to make it about me. Uh, you're right. You're right. You said that. I'm sorry. You're a good guy. I'm, you know what? I'm, I apologize because um, I've had a rough 24 hours. And um, I'm attacking you, and I really apologize. I do like, I do find your coping skills kind of interesting, babe. Why? 
I mean, just the amount, like just the photos you keep texting me. Okay, okay, so, okay. <laughs> That's interesting that you would say something like that. And you like send that. it to me, like, I'm alone at home and I'm at so midnight. My mom, he, I'm not going to show anybody, but. Well, can I just say what he's been, what you've yeah, been sending ahead, me? Yeah. Bobby has been sending me, texting me, pictures of his um, dead father from no, no. 80 from eighty different angles. No, no, no. That's a lot of angles. Babe, how many angles? Babe, enough. Oh man, that's sad. Yeah. Is that does that make you feel better? Because when I get them, when I receive them, it makes me feel okay. I'm gonna say this. Sad. I'm gonna say this. You're following your mom's order. Are you crying right now? It's just sad. Wow, that's interesting. We don't cope with um with you got sad sorrow now. very well, huh? As yeah. a team. Oh man. Thank you. It's the idea of a parent. Yeah, thank leaving, you for that. Leaving. Don't make me cry right now, man, because it's going to fly out. Yeah, I'll stop. I'm trying not to. Right yeah, stop yeah, right now. I stop. I sh- I, I'm sorry I shouldn't have showed you that, but this is my mom's fault. Because <laughs> since look. Saturday, she kept saying, film, film. Film what? Everything. So she's like, take photos. So she took made me take videos, photos. And then when she di- he died, she's like, More. So we took a morbid photo of me and my mom. I did it on a timer on my phone. I know it's weird. I saw the picture. And morbid. And morbid. Very... I know. But that's my mom. Yeah. Right. And then when I showed her one of the photos, she cried for three hours. I think she has the same thing. I think some sort of tragedy porn thing or something. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's just some mm-hmm. weird thing. I think we're going on. But we can, that's what we're not. I don't want her to get addicted to remorse. Mm. So we're not giving her anything. What would she be more remorseful about? You know how a lot of people, like, I saw a uh, an HBO series. If you have HBO now, there used to be a great show that I used to watch called Autopsy. Yeah, What's with that? Dr. Bodden. With Dr. Bodden, right? So it's a show about, like, forensics. Okay. It was the first show of its kind. Now there's millions of shows. But back then, that was the only show like that. And they showed real bodies and stuff and real cases. So it was really interesting. But there was a lady who, in it, that had... I think, I'm not lying, 11 kids died. Yeah, I remember. Right? She would have kids, and then two years later... Tragedy. They, 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 mm. Tragedy would happen where they would find, be found blue in their cribs, right? Mm-hmm. And so they, she, they, they, people, doctors thought that she had some sort of disease, some sort of disease that's like not... And at, for 10 years, every kid would die that way yeah they thought they, that they had she had passed on like a genetic of, type right. of thing that was like fatal after like a certain but one of her kids that died was she adopted yeah this oh, mexican guy so or was, a kid right she was dead so then the doctor was like no this kid has the same symptoms as your other kids but this kid you adopted and then she so she was addicted to What's it that Munchausen? Munchausen. Munchausen is that what that is? Munchausen. A little on the extreme end of that, the yeah, Munchausen by yeah. proxy. Or you, people like tragic things so that people go because that's what she was addicted to. Yeah. People going, I'm so sorry, Elizabeth, whatever her name was, right? Yeah. So um, I don't want my mom to get that. I don't think your mom has that. I just don't want her to get it. That's all. She's Hard. taking every precaution. She doesn't even want a service. Yeah. I mean, that goes to show you that she doesn't want any attention. She's just grieving on her own and doesn't want to hear from anyone. Yeah, what did Steve say? Okay, hang on. That's it. That's so your it. brothers are is taking it clearly different from you. Like he's already just like your mom. I think that Steve is is really grieving correctly and letting himself feel all the feelings, which is yeah. which is a, a a good way. You know, he's not trying to hold anything back, which is good. I don't know. I'm what afraid it, for know. this guy. Oh, yeah, I'm afraid too. I don't know what's going mm-hmm. on. Something is going on though. That's a little. But when you get home, I'm going to have you sleep and just relax and catch up on rest. And I think that after when that happens and you can reflect more, then maybe you'll be able to let it out properly. Yeah, I feel it in my chest, in my throat, in my mind. I feel it in my, in my bones, man. I I want to cry. I just not doing it. I think I did it already when I got there. For three yeah. days, I cried all day long. And I know, and you did tell me that um, when you n- didn't want to see him pass, like your brother wanted to see yeah, him pass. Yeah, I thought that was weird, my, and, and I get it, but my brother didn't want him to be alone, but he also was kind of obsessed of being there because he just wants to be there at every second. I was the same is, way with my dad. Oh, you were? Yeah. My, um, I wanted I wanted to watch every single rise and fall of his chest until the very end. 
Yeah. Why? It made me feel like I it I uh, the finality and the full circleness of it. It gave me some relief and closure to be like, okay, this is life. Like he saw me at my begin beginning. I see him at his end. So it kind of I like that full circle feeling of it. But he, 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 here's here's the thing that I want to say, which is my dad was an avid golfer. He taught a lot of Koreans. And he played a lot of white dudes even here in Phoenix. Like when I do shows in Phoenix, I'll have old white men come to my shows. I used to play golf with your dad. He was amazing. My dad was oh, wow. a good golfer. Yeah. My dad played tennis too. Every Sunday, my mom and dad and all my family would play tennis at this place. And then afterwards, we'd go to round table pizza and we would play video games and then they would get pizza. And it was a big, we did that for years. And it was a, every Sunday, they would do that. And it felt, you know, and that's when I had a car. I, you know, when I was 16, I got a car. So mm-hmm. we would go. And it, I was on drugs, but um, <laughs> when I was lucid and there, it was fun. And um, my dad was always athletic, and he was a hard worker. For the last year, he hasn't moved. He literally can't walk. He can't be in a wheelchair. He's constantly just in a bed, getting fed through a tube in the stomach, and um, not being able to talk or communicate. And he wouldn't be able to poo properly. She would have to, every day, we had a hospice nurse toward the end, Mm. They'd have to dig the poo out of his butt. And it to me, and I know how what he is, he that's it's powerless. And it he's in a situation that he, I know he doesn't like because he's an active dude. Mm-hmm. And he was suffering. Okay. Yeah. And so, and by being there and watching this man suffer that way, especially when they said we're not gonna feed him or you know, mm-hmm. imagine what he was going through. All right. And when my brother and I were there, when he saw us, you could tell that it like, he, they're here. And yeah. that's when I cried. But then when he went into his coma, I was like, I wanted him to go now. Yeah. Not because I wanted over, I want him there. It's just, I don't want him to suffer. I really don't. Yeah. And so to me, there was a sense of relief. Yeah. When I saw him, I was like, God, thank God. Mm. You know, but my mom and my Steve weren't like that they were like freaking out i mean and i want to be too i feel the same way it's just that i look at it a little different than they do i just cannot do it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i know him and i just i think and i also this is going to sound really crazy but there is a sense that i'm going to see him again Mm -hmm. and i'm not a religious person i don't there's no facts it is a real i I express that to my dad and not my dad my brother and my mom you know that i'm gonna i feel like i'm gonna see him again it was a Real distinct feeling that it wasn't the end, and it could be, it could be nothingness, but I don't know for sure. But that's a good feeling to have. But it did, I did have that feeling, and um, who knows? Yeah, I like that. Um, there are a lot of people in America that don't bother to say my name correctly, even if I tell them to say my name correctly. Yeah. Bobby's dad on first go. The man has had multiple strokes, can't really talk that great, and he nailed my name the first time. That's right. Remember that? And I was That's shocked. Right. But he, I, in my mind, I'm like, oh, he had been told what my name was and he probably like practiced it in my head. So wow. when he first met me, he just said my name and I was like, yeah, that's yeah. my guy. And this event, in a weird way, it has nothing to do with Juju George. What I'm saying is, is that it really has nothing to do with you. But I had a couple of friends, Alan Meadows and my friend Jensen, who I haven't talked to, they're high school friends. And Jensen was really mad because, and he he has to know this, but I don't text anyone back. Ask Crystalia. It's just it maybe it's a habit I'm going to change about myself. But <clears throat> a lot of these high school friends, if I don't text them back right away, they freak out and they, th- I feel like they think that I'm doing a Hollywood thing or I'm not, you know. But so there's a lot of older friends. I was able to say thank you to them, and then um. Some newer friends too, like like I don't know Ronnie Chang, Chang, from the Daily Show. Oh, Ronnie Chang! Yeah. But I was in an elevator in Montreal, and he was happened to be. I knew what he looked like. I knew who he was. Mm-hmm. So I just turned to him and I go, "I like you," and he we hugged. <laughs> and he goes, "I like you too," and um, he texted. You know, he texted me, 
you know, I just met Jay Hernandez. He met nice, you know, so people, you know, Mike Castle and Lauren, you know, mm -hmm. they did it. And um, everyone, every guest we've ever had from Bisbing to the Ruin oh, Brothers yeah. to um, Air Stone Street to everyone. Mm -hmm. They all reached out and said, what can we do? In fact, Michael Rosenbaum has left many audio messages that were really sweet. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, I could play one if you want. I think you can only play it twice. If you don't keep it, you lose it. I don't. I didn't. I don't even finish them. You lose it, right? The audios. You can save it, can't you? Yeah, if you decide to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really listen to it all the way through, though. Yeah, so we'll he's listen the to best. It. He's man. the best. Michael Rosenbaum. Do you know that he was really worried about you, and he reached out to me. He was probably the first person to know that you were out here. And yeah. he, every day he was like, hey, how's he doing? How's his dad? And he reached out to you immediately, right? Yeah, and I'm going to tell you another guy that shocked me. But as soon as I, because a lot of people aren't in LA. They're on the road or whatever. They're busy. They don't know that. I mean, obviously, they don't think about me all the time, right? As soon as I posted it, it's, I'm not taking 20 seconds into the post. Delia called me from because he's shooting that movie in New Mexico. Action movie. He's an action star now. And he literally nice. goes, what do you need? I'm here. What do you need? And then. That shouldn't shock you, though, sweetheart. Delia's a good guy. Yeah. You know. What a nice guy. You know. George is having a hard time keeping serious. <laughs> I can see his lips yeah, pursing. You're yeah. like, he's not real, man. It's, he's farm. <laughs> You're it's farm. farm. It's farm life, man. They don't know. They think they know, but they don't. But I love him. Thanks for the food, and the grazing, and the potatoes. So over, over <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the farm, the farm, the farm, oh, the farm. Yeah, I'm going with the farm. Thank you for all that. John Deere, Your mom too. John Thank Deere you for all the fertilizer. So and over dinner, work. you were telling us about the plans for your father's ashes. And you were telling us about your concerns. Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, my brother and I are concerned that if we put all his ashes in one urn, that that's definitely his ghost will haunt. So we split up his ashes. And I, and I kind of sidely said, I want the bottom half. <laughs> you know only I mean? the bottom half? Yeah, but I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they have that, that kind of technology. But what is the reason for the bottom half? Because if his legs are haunting me, that's that's not that scary. Uh, it's you, upper body. It's upper body. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. If you saw two ghostlets with a dick <laughs> flailing around, that's true. No body or me hiding underneath the bed, and you can definitely see the legs. Ooh. Oh, no, whoa! No, 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 no. But but um. Nope. So, and my mom's like, so she's like, well, it'll be done in two weeks. <laughs> you know, we'll have the engraving and all that stuff. Because obviously I ordered the Supreme package with the with name and the dates and the um, face engraving. Why on the are you box. rubbing it in my face? Because you knew my dad's like urn was like $20 Tupperware. I know because yeah. I just want to let you know that that's wrong. We didn't have a lot of <laughs> That's not right. Okay, don't use you didn't you? have yeah, money yeah, as an don't excuse. Don't tell that. Yeah, figure it out. It was the saddest thing Get along. ever. <laughs> Honestly, they came out and they were like, this one is the cheapest one. It's $30. And it looked like a cheaper version of it was like a cardboard box, like a thin cardboard box. And I remember my mom and my sister and I, we were just so in a state of like des we were in a state of desperation yeah. that we just collapsed in laughter. Like it was we were so delirious and, and, and <laughs> sad and all of the emotions rushing that we just we were cry laughing in this mortuary because we were looking at the box like this stupid flimsy cardboard box i'm like this is what life comes to that's crazy especially a guy like that a man who traveled the world had so many interesting um experiences a long life a, a complex adventurous life that your dad had that's I know, crazy and we're all just you know, that's like, why he deserved more than a plastic box you know Tupperware. I mean? just get like a regular wooden box and get some engraving that's all some engraving. They didn't afford it. I know, but you know, figure it out. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's ne it's too late. You fucked that up. But the next time, make it better. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you're being. I think you're being sensitive. I think you're being I'm sensitive. Kidding. Come on, come on, don't get angry. If when, when don't it, get angry. Come on. 
We're here. We're, this is a comedy podcast. We're in a hotel. We're in a hotel. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so we're, so even my mom, though, she goes, it, the, the boxes will be done in a week or two weeks. And she's like, we can just send it to your house. She goes, no, keep it here. I go, why? She's like, I'm not having that in my house. She doesn't want the ashes in no. her home. Why? She believes in it. Superstition. Wait, but she, but. That's a thing with ashes. I thought ashes was just the remains and the soul. I don't know. She doesn't know the. She doesn't have the details. You know, she just knows that the feeling, the feeling, Mm -hmm. and she'll probably manifest something in her mind. Yeah. And so we'll just hold on. Are we bringing the ashes to our home then? The bottom half. Yes. The bottom half. My my brother's gonna. Or we could split it. Maybe half. I don't know how they're gonna do it. And didn't you say you wanted full bones in it? (laughs) I was confused by that. I almost feel like you know. Here's the thing. It's that's a silly thing to say, my friend. Oh, uh, you said it three hours ago. <laughs> Very silly thing you to say. Said you said you wanted three bone hour. chunks in there. Babe. I said it, but that's silly that you don't know the reason why. Oh, why? Well, what is the reason? And I don't know how it works. <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> you were thinking about how to. No, explain. I don't know how it works. <laughs> okay, but um, I feel like in those, it's an oven, right? A hot yeah, oven. It's a hot, hot oven, oven, right? Yeah. Now they put a body in there. They take the ashes out, but they don't take all the ashes out. Do they clean it between two bodies? I don't think they do. Mm. I think they do, babe. They they water it down and make it completely ash free. Probably not. You probably. No. You're probably so what right. What I'm saying is, is probably. that we're getting right, not full. My dad. We're getting chunks Other of some old Jewish lady that died fucking four years ago. Yeah. Right. The little Puerto Rican kid that had a heart defect. He died. Oh. I know. Sad. <laughs> yes, yeah. Sad. Well, so we're getting multiple ghosts in her. Home. Right. So what I'm saying is, is that, but she's like, <laughs> we can grind it down to an ash. Or she gave us the option. There can be chunks of bone. She gave you the option. Oh, that was an option. Yeah, and I go bone. Oh, those bone are in. Bone in. <laughs> bone. Yeah. Dark meat, please. Yeah. Because if you grind it all the way down, I don't know what I'm getting, bone but I feel like chunks of bone. If you know, <laughs> instead of putting the oven to a ten, she did a seven. <laughs> That That's all works. I want. So they have chunks. So when I rattle the box, I go, "Yep, he's in there." <laughs> <laughs> you hear. You know what I mean? Bowden. Something. <sighs> yeah. And then they're like, my, they go close because my mom went to go get his favorite outfit, which looks like Papa Smurf. Mm. Light blue golf pants, a white... <laughs> I'm not kidding you. A, a, a white turtleneck, <laughs> right? And a b- b- light bright blue pants yeah. bright blue golf, golfer's jacket who chose this my mom <laughs> his mom so is she, a very she, yeah, eccentric she, she's very eccentric director. she goes this is he had to wear this right and they're like well should we take it off when he she wanted it with uh, the clothes too oh I see so she, they're burning the smurf outfit and the whole thing <sighs> and that's happening tomorrow and we did we chose not to attend that because why yeah what it's morbid mm. why in fact, today when they were like, you want to see the body one last time? And my mom was almost leaning. I go, mom. It's enough. Yeah. He was just in a refrigerator for 24 hours. He's not going to look. He's going to look frozen. You know? And she's like, all right. And then she was giving me kind of, are you sure? Mm-hmm. I feel guilt. I go, no. No, we're, done. we're not doing that again. Mm-hmm. We did it. Oh, my God. You have to understand, when you're dealing with, when you're supposed to be the oldest and responsible one. And I'm not responsible. You know that. I'm a mm. fuck up. Mm. But when you're sp- supposed to be, I did. don't cry. I'm strong. That's probably what it is. I'm going, all right, let's do, we got to do this. We got to do this. Fill out this. We fill it out. You need money? Please give them the money. All right, tell me where you're going to, you know. Yeah. Because if I'm in shambles, then what? Nothing gets yeah. done. Nothing gets done. I had to do it. Yeah. And I think I'm not going to, maybe it's not going to come out in a weird way, but, um, you know, I know this is not the funniest podcast, but I can't fake it. We have to talk about real things, and that's what happened. And um, you guys want to talk about any of your lives or what? There's nothing going on. What's going on with your life? Mine? Gilbert, first. Well, I just got sad because that was great. Yeah. yeah. You know, keep going, sorry. No, I was just thinking about my grandpa. Oh, yes. He was as Lolo's um, 80th birthday this past weekend. He flew to Chicago. It's just the way you describe how your dad like was an active tennis player, played golf. And to see him suffering, I just see my grandpa's hand now shaking. It's like, oh, wow. That's so weird. Would you fly back if they said he, it's, he's at the end? Yes. Well, um, good luck. 
I'm sorry. It sucks. Hmm. It sucks. I'm sorry. How about you? Hmm? So aside from cliff fucking. <laughs> what have you been doing? Just working hard. That's I don't great. know. No. House farm. Good? House farm? House farm. Just, answer, just house. answer it. Answer me, man. Yeah, um, say yes. No, actually, my mom's going through it since they, uh, or actually, I shouldn't, uh. Is that blood on your shoulder? Um, oh, maybe. God. From what? I've been looking at that. It reminds me of the movie. Wait, now. wait, wait. Let me show your shoulder. Are you bleeding, dude? He has uh, fucking zits on his shoulder, and they're popping like fucking popcorn onto his shirt. That's how. That's fucking crazy. Give me a hug. I don't think that's a zit, babe. Give me a hug. Hug, hug on camera. Give me a hug, man. I'm sorry about it, man. There he is. Hug it out. All right, man. Yeah, you don't have to talk about your family stuff, George, if you don't want to. Yeah, you don't have to. No, just for technical reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's something going on? Yeah, if there's like legal stuff going on, don't do that. Oh, we'll we'll get into it later, okay? Yeah. You're a great sidekick and a great producer, and I really appreciate it. I've been hanging out with Steve Green, and he's been making fun of me for just being the best sidekick ever, so easy to make fun of. You're such a good sidekick. Eric's trying to steal me. Did I tell you that? Yeah, Eric Griffin um, wants to do a podcast with Kalila. And I think that... I thought he was joking at first. I think it would be good. I'm just saying, if you did like a once a month thing with him yeah. and not do a committed thing, just do one little mm-hmm. thing, that'd be fine. I love Eric. He was very, very easy to... I just love Eric. You know how much I love Eric. I think that, you know, when I go on the... When I go travel, when in Hawaii or Maju, wherever I go, Phoenix... Even when we were in the elevator, they looked mm. at us, these two guys, and they go, we love the podcast. And I think that, um, honestly, especially in Montreal, when I would walk around with my agent and my manager, and people, half the people would go, where's Kalila? Mm. And they know your name. I think that that is so powerful for me because you're very good at what you do. And I think Eric gets it. I think a lot of, like, Christ, um, um, Christine, right? Get Christina? P. Christina Pazitsky. Pazitsky, yeah. Christina gets it. These people get it. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that H3 podcast, Hila, 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 is very, uh, love you. (laughs) Hila. We're going to do their show in a couple of Yeah. So I think that that, um, I did just think, I did that that you're just somebody that you can't replace and um, you're just very good at what you do. And um, I don't know how much time that was. How much was that? We're good. We're pretty good, right? Yeah. How much were we at, though? Over an hour. Yeah. I think that we should keep it at that, maybe, don't you think? Or no, no, yeah, just keep it at that. I don't think we yeah. need it. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. I don't want to push it because there's a lot You know, there's a lot of things I want to talk about. We can may save for the next one. Yeah. Um, that was, you know, I haven't done it in a while, and I think that's a pretty good um, one to put out for the kids. I think my brother and I are going to do, an, um, before I leave, a Patreon, and he. I told him he can't get any of the money of it. <laughs> You need to sleep. <laughs> Are you trying to start wars? Yeah. You need a rest, sweetheart. Yeah. You're going to sleep well tonight. No, no. I got to go to the store. All right. Let's get you some sleepy stuff. Any final words? Cologne? Yeah. I have many final words mm. for people. Uh, no social papaya. Yeah. Kimbo Slice. Kim- oh, R.I.P. R.I.P. He died. For a while, yeah. It's been that- what do you mean for a while? What is he back alive now? It's been that's it's the old news, right? Oh shit! What do you mean he's alive? Oh, can we again? talk about the fights really? Quick? Yeah, I want to do that oh, really yeah, quick. Yeah, MMA yeah. minute. Okay, the week before the <laughs> fights were fucking terrible. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Every fight oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. was terrible. Not the best. Boring. But this one, oh fuck! My brother and I were at the hospice Saturday, and he goes, "Let's watch it with that." I didn't want to watch it with my dad in the room, so we went to the living room area of this hospice. And we put it on, and I'm my brother and I. Every match, we're like, "This is fucking good." It's a good card. Dude, beginning to end, it was good. I know all of it was the so Paulo fucking Costa good. Paulo Costa and Romero. I mean, just how many Bro. shots can he take, dude? Oh, so you know, and that's forty-two years old. Romero was good. He's really but, good. I like him a lot. He's forty-two. He's good. He'll never be champion, no. but he's good. And then the Nate Diaz, amazing. Oh, so Love good. Love that fight. Amazing. So good. He hadn't fought in three years. So yeah. It's so funny how the, that second Connor was three years ago. Yeah. I thought it was. I know. It's crazy how the time flies. And then um, even the last Miochik. Oh, my God. So good. Thank you. Comeback. Dang, DC was put in. Body on. shot over. No, no, no. Like the first round, DC was amazing. Oh, 1-0. 
for sure. But after the second round, he looked at Closer. his corner. He said, "Did I lose that, that round? round?" Yeah, but I still thought that he was. I know, he but still he's never that. said that. So in now we have an insight into what he's thinking, mm-hmm. and what he's thinking is, "Holy shit, this guy's hard this time." Yeah, yes. I think he knew that though, because I was watching the embedded before that. <laughs> And then he went to go shake Miochik's hand. Yeah. Um, Miochik's hand. And um, he went back to his team and he was like, that was a hard handshake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you saw that yeah, part? Yeah, I met him. Yeah, he, he was actually like, and his his team knew that Miochik would be, you know, much harder fighter this time around. And also, he is a guy that I don't think the UFC appreciated that much as Who's champion. Stipe? Yeah. I think that they didn't promote him as much. Yeah. I think that he felt that too through just interviews and yeah. things that glimpses. And I think that um, he could end up being one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Totally. Yeah. I love Stipe. Yeah, I love him. He's a he's very good. But no one beats DC for me. DC's well, like my my fave. We got a trilogy now at least. Yeah. Also, trilogy. Daniel, I want to say this. I know you're not. You know, we have Bisping. I fine. wish he'd come on but our podcast. I want to say this, He'll Daniel Carme. Okay. Do Tiger Belly. Also, secondly, okay. We think you're one of the greatest of all time. Yes. We really do. I've been following your career since day one. I mean, it's early. Strike you know, force. Strike force. And I've always liked you. I think that you're a very good um, commentator as well. Mm-hmm. That new show that you have on ESPN about like, you know. Like the breakdown. Theory of breakdown. Mm-hmm. Very good. And I, and I think that you're one of the greatest of all time. So don't let this, I know you're not listening, but fuck it. Listen, okay? I know you're not, but I want you to. And I want you to know that we love you here at Tiger Bell. We also love the Diaz brothers or anybody that wants to do our show. Come. Because we're, ask Bisbing. It's pretty good. Okay? <laughs> also, we have, I know that Rose Nami Yunus has direct messaged me on Instagram saying that she's in oh, town. She yeah. might want to do it. Yeah. Oh, Johanna, right? So, you know what I mean? Let that be. Rhonda, you're invited. Connor, you're invited. Wait, but you didn't say we didn't say nice things about Ron. Or you didn't, sweetheart. So why would she want to come on your show? Plus, she's like super rich, doing WWE now. We're nothing to her. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I don't want to hear that negativity. Yeah, let's stop there. But Positive. anyway, seriously, guys, thank you for listening. I'm, I canceled a lot of road dates because I'm just not in the right frame of mind of doing it. I will be in Hawaii, and then my next road date that I'm going to do is Portland. Mm-hmm. It's the next one on the books. Um, it's been a really crazy year for me. I haven't really fully. I, it's January. I was still on splitting up together. Yeah. You know, I mean, imagine Ooh. what I've gone through since. Then. I mean, you know, it's a been lot's great. happened. Then a lot has happened. Whoa. This is the craziest year of my life. Mm-hmm. And so, um, peace out, namaste, cliff fucking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, was there housekeeping? <laughs> no, just make sure you follow us, everyone, on Instagram at Tiger Belly, on Twitter at The Tiger Belly. Follow everything at Kalila at Calamity K, everything at George at George underscore Kimmel. And for all those road dates Bobby canceled, any future road dates, check out his website at BobbyLeeLive.com or follow him on Instagram at BobbyLeeLive. Guys, I'm Gilbert's. Have a good night. Yeah.